don't have many visitors here, Miss Winters, but you'll have your day off in several evenings a week. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. And of course, there's my daughter, Carolyn. You're about the same age. I'm sure you'll get along very well. She's a lovely girl.
big shot. We told him to build his prison anyway. Roger, I didn't like the... Carolyn, I didn't expect you home so early. Neither did I. What happened, darling? Is something wrong? Oh, nothing. What is it, baby? What is it? Why is it impossible for me to enjoy myself? Well, why don't I make some tea and, and you and I... No cakes, no tea. All I want to do is go to bed. You sure nothing's wrong? Oh, Mother, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of trying. Oh. Joe Haskell. Oh, it wasn't his fault. Carolyn, you don't know how I worry about you. I know, Mother. But let's face it, you love this house. And that's just grand for you. But every chance I find to walk away from here and, and find a little brightness, well, how can you ask me to give it up? Well, there are other ways. When I was ten years old, I used to dream that a white knight would come along and rescue me from this dungeon. Guess white knights have gone out of style. I thought you liked Joe Haskell. Carol, darling, all I ever pray for is for you to be happy. Joe loves you. And I like him, but he's not a white knight, Mother. We can't always get everything we want. I'm going to try. Please, please stop trying to marry me off. Okay? Besides, how do you expect me to go away and leave you alone in this beautiful nut house? I won't be. Not anymore. You mean she actually came? A few minutes ago. She's a nice girl, Carolyn. You'll like her very much. All I can say for her mother, she must be out of her mind. one doesn't make any difference, whichever you like. Well, Vicky, on behalf of myself and my kooky family, I bid you welcome to the House of Usher. <laughs> Thanks. On second thought, I'd be glad to help you pack. Well, not tonight. Well, I guess there's some of us who just love to suffer. Oh, you sure I'm not disturbing you? I have a bad habit of just popping in. Oh, no, no, not at all. I was just writing a letter to a friend back home. Why don't you sit down? When you write to your friend, all you have to say is one word. Help! Vicky, you seem like a nice person. Do yourself a favor. Go back home to New York. You know, I've been hearing that every hour on the hour since I got here. Why does everyone want me to go home? Oh, I didn't say I want you to go. Heck no, it'll be a ball having somebody around here to talk to. But you've been in this mausoleum a couple of hours. Do you think it'll be fun and games? I'm willing to find out. Victoria Winters, I think I'm gonna like you. Okay. Ask. Ask what? Well, I was born and brought up in this prison. And you can't tell me you don't have a couple of dozen questions. Come, come. No hesitation, please. It will not hurt. Very good. Well, I do have a question. Good, good. Who's Burke Devlin? Never heard of him. Your uncle has. 
Oh, so you met Uncle Roger. What did you think of him? He's a real doll, isn't he? Well, he seems very nice. Nice? Vicky, Roger Collins has more charm in his right earlobe than all the characters in this icky, sticky town. Oh, he sends me. He really does. And you know who my mother wants me to be hung up on? Joe Haskell. A fisherman yet. Oh, sure, Joe's a nice guy, but... Well, let's face it, Vicky. If you had your choice between a charmer like Uncle Roger and a homegrown variety, which would it be? I didn't know you had the choice. I guess I don't. I guess I'll never have any real choices until I can... Hey, you were asking me about someone, weren't you? I was asking you about Bert Devlin. Oh, yes. Bert Devlin. Burke Devlin. Never heard of him. Friend or foe, advance and be recognized. Even the tutors are out tonight. Hello, Vicky. Hi. I thought this would be my own lonely, quiet little spot tonight. But we all share our possessions here on Widow's Hill brings you down here. I just wanted to get some fresh air. The ocean certainly is rough. It'll be a lot rougher if you fall. It's a long way down, Vicky. That's just what I needed. A nice, cheerful talk. This is the place. Carolyn, do you come out here often? At night, I mean. No. Nope. Only when I'm looking for something special. Like what? Ghosts. Oh. That's right, Vicky. Ghosts. They're all around us. Everywhere. Can I butt in for a second? Hello, Uncle Roger. Hi, kitten. Of course you can. Come right in. What do you want, Carolyn? I'm just looking for a lost wristwatch. Won't be a second. That's all right. Take your time. You look tired, Liz. Why don't you go to bed? I thought you'd gone upstairs some time ago. Carolyn lost her wristwatch, and I said I'd help her find it. No luck, Vicky. I guess we'll have to go back out to the widows. Well, I'm game if you are. doing out of bed again. Where's, where's Miss Winters going? She went to look for a wristwatch, and you go to bed. That's not what she's going to find. She's going to find death. to find out just what it is. I know there are no such things as ghosts, but suppose there are. Well, then I'll see something I've never seen before. Who's in here? Who did it? 
Well, it, it must have fallen off the table. I guess it couldn't have gotten all the way over here, though. Not by itself. Now, do you believe what I was saying? No. There has to be a logical explanation. Yes. Maybe a cat got in the window and knocked it off. In all my life in this house, I have never seen a cat in here. Anyway, a cat couldn't get the book from that table to here. It's very heavy. You're right. So if it isn't a logical explanation, there's only one other possible explanation. I don't even like to think about that one. Vicky, please, let's go back upstairs. I feel a lot safer there. At least we can lock the door. I was a fool, Joe. I should have known better than to be angry with you for wanting to be an independent human being. Why don't we just forget it, huh? No, no, wait till I finish my speech. You see, I got to thinking that your ideas and the way you want to live are exactly the kinds of things my ancestors would have understood. They didn't build this town and this house by marrying the boss's daughter. They did it with their own hands and their own brains I've and their own I've listened to ideas. enough of this now. Do me a favor, honey, just turn it off, will you? Okay, no more speech. Sounds like we're in for a big one. I better change my clothes if we want to beat the rain. See you in ten minutes. Carolyn, wait. Well, look, it's gonna rain. I don't want to get my sexiest dress soaking wet. Just glad. stay here a minute and listen to me. What's the matter, Joe? Don't you want to celebrate? No, it's not that. It's just... Look, honey, I, I came here tonight because you insisted. You said you wanted to talk to me. Sure. I did. I wanted to make the big apology. Oh, well, that's, that's great. Uh, I'm glad you're not sore at me and, uh, or anything like that. But you don't want to take me out tonight. Is that what you're trying to tell me? It's not that I don't want to. It's just... Well, when you weren't around today, I... The fact is, Carolyn, I, I, I made other plans. I'm sorry. Well, they must be pretty special plans, the way you're all dressed up tonight. No, it's nothing very special. I was invited to dinner by a, a friend. I see. Well, I don't want to interfere with your evening. Honey, it's just too late to call it off. It isn't fair. I mean, I'm ten minutes late already, and she's probably wondering what she? happened. She? Oh, your friend is a she. It's nothing, Carolyn. You know her. She's a good friend I don't of care yours. who it is. I certainly wouldn't want you to keep her waiting. Carolyn, I just couldn't get in touch with you. Can't you understand that? I understand it perfectly. Joe Haskell, the sailor with a girl in every port. Well, go on and have your fun, Joe. Oh. Don't let me spoil your good time. Making a big deal out Don't of nothing. Don't tell me what I'm making. I have big plans for us tonight, Joe, for both of us. I even thought I might... Joe, do me a favor. Get out of here. Carolyn, you're acting like a kid. Oh, you don't know where the front door is. Well, suppose I show you. Carolyn, I am just going to have dinner with someone. I'm not getting married. You bet you're not getting married. Not to me, anyway. Well, maybe that's the best thing that could ever happen to me. Listen to me, Joe Haskell. I never want to see you again. And this time, I mean it. Now get out of here. Go into your dinner party. Carolyn, what's all the shouting for? Good night, Mrs. Stoddard. Well, what happened? Nothing, Mother. Nothing at all. Why do you always have to be in everybody's way? <laughs> yeah. You know hey, you have a good, strong voice there. Well, if you ain't loud, that it is. If we had a third, you know, we could harmonize. Hey, wait a minute. I think your prayers are answered. Don't go away. Welcome to the Metropolitan Opera House. Hey. You're fine. Oh, no, no, there's no time for judgments tonight. Where's your boyfriend? I haven't got a boyfriend. Oh, 
Well, then you won't mind joining us. You know my old friend Sam Evans, I'm sure. Good evening. Hello. Please, sit down. Thank you. <laughs> that was quite a serenade. Oh, yes, we're seeing it's an old and deserving friend who's out <laughs> looking for his just desserts. Hey, you're all wet. Uh, is it raining? It's pouring. How long have you been in here? Oh, years and years. What day is today, Sam? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, what day is it, Miss Stoddard? <laughs> I think you're both crazy. <laughs> wise. Only wise. Mm. Where's Vicky? Yeah, you should have brought Vicky along. I'm sorry if you're disappointed. Well, Carolyn, she's a nice girl. Her bright smile would brighten up this table. Well, then I guess you don't need me. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry, Carolyn. Sit down. I didn't mean anything. You uh, must forgive my boorish friend, Miss Stoddard. Please. Why don't you join us in song? Will you please? <laughs> okay. What would you like to drink? Or maybe you want something to eat. What does it matter if eat. I didn't have any? Oh, my gosh. I'm supposed to be home for dinner. I'll get murdered. Oh, now, do you tell Maggie not to touch a hair of your head? No, no, no. This is a very special occasion. She's had a young man over at the house, and I... Uh, well, uh, I guess I'd better get going. I, 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 I'll see you around, Bert. Uh, round and round. Joe Haskell, right? I beg your pardon? Maggie's guest. It's Joe, isn't it? Well, did I, did I say that? Loud and clear. Yeah. Well, I, I'll see you around. The green eye of jealousy, huh? Why should I be jealous of anything Joe does? That's a good question. Another good question is, what are we going to do? That is entirely up to you. What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken Bill Malloy, who died so cruelly in the sea. Did I detect a certain reluctance on your part to discuss Carolyn in front of David? I've never seen her so upset. She had a fight with Joe Haskell, and she said she was going out and have fun with or without him. Good for her. I hope she does exactly that. having a drink. Oh. Well, maybe this time I'll join you. May I see your identification card? There are other ways to prove I'm old enough. Well, in that case, we'll, uh, we'll start with a drink. And don't make mine too strong. That I won't. But make it strong enough. Okay, I will. I'm so glad I ran into you at the Blue Whale. And well, that's another thing. What's the town's most attractive girl doing in a place like the Blue Whale alone? I was in a mood. Have a fight with your young man? I don't even want to talk about it. Yes, we had a fight. But he is not, as you so elegantly put it, my young man. Well, in that case, let's talk about a much more fascinating subject. What subject is that? Your old man, me. Why do you always have to pretend you're so old? Oh, I always feel that way when I'm around somebody who is so young. I, I thought we just agreed that you don't have to see my identification card to know my age. Yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right. <laughs> Besides, a man shouldn't talk about a woman's age unless she's under seven or over seven. Correct. Skull. What shall we drink to? Well, I don't see anyone else around here, do you? No. Well, then let's drink to us. To us. I tell you, you haven't lived until you've seen Rio at carnival time. Rio for those few days is like, like a man didn't have an enemy in the world. And there's nothing to do but enjoy yourself. Oh, it sounds heavenly. Well, it wasn't as uh, heavenly as all that. Oh, you mean there was a bit of hell raising, Well, there's too. a thin line between the two. I bet I know which side of the line you're on. My dear Miss Stoddard. Carol. My dear Carol. 
Why didn't you try that without the mind? Dear Carol. Yes. I forgot what I was going to say. Do you mind if I put my feet up on the table? Maybe your feet. <laughs> First time I did this, in front of a girl, I was the most embarrassed guy you ever saw. Holding the socks. Holding both socks. <laughs> and, and to complicate matters, she couldn't speak English and I couldn't speak Portuguese. What did she do? Yeah, she taught me a great deal about coffee. There are many theories about the best coffee bean. Were you in love with her? <laughs> oh, no. We were very good friends. Bert, have you ever been in love? Yes. Once. Is it always such a painful experience? Not really. Burke, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. This has been the most wonderful evening I've ever had in my whole life. Do you think we could have a few more? Yes. Shall I drive you home? No. The chiefs might not approve. Besides, I'm a very good swimmer. Can you understand me? Mrs. Can. Mrs. Stoddard, you're all right. You are all right. She's beginning to move. Dr. Lowe, the expression on her face. Something is frightening her. Come out of it. Why, Doctor? Why is this happening? I don't know. Something put her into the state. Now it's breaking up. She recognizes me. I'm sure she recognizes yes, me. Yes, her vision's definitely returned. Mother! Mother, it's Carolyn. I'm here. You'll be all right. She's trying to speak. What is it, Mother? I'm listening. What are you trying to tell me? What, what are you trying to say? She's trying to form a word. I'm listening, Mother. I'm, I'm listening. Dave. 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 Are you trying Dave. to say something about David? Dave. Dave. David. 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 Mother. Mother. Easy, Mrs. Stoddard. Easy. David. What about David? Oh, Night back, David, Mrs. Stoddard. David. David. Fire. What about fire? David, David and fire. And so the phoenix builds a nest in the tallest palm tree. Don't tell the story, David. Don't finish it. Finish it. Finish it, David. Hurry, darling. It's almost time for us to go into a new life. Don't go with her. Please, David, don't. David! Mother, David! What, what is it? David and fire! Why are you saying oh, that? I, I can see it. What can you see? Fire, fire all it's around just, David. It's a dream, it's a dream. David, help, help, David. What shall I do, Mother? I, I don't know what to David. do. David! David! Finish the legend. 
It's time to go, darling. The phoenix watches the sun rise. Higher and higher into the sky. Mother, mother! No, David, no! You'll burn, you'll die! Hurry, David, before it's too late, please! Mother, mother! David! Hurry, David, hurry! Before it's too late! Mother! There are only a few seconds left, David. Don't let me go without you, please. I don't want to be without you. I must have you now, David, now. Don't listen to her, David. Come to me. You'll burn. David, you'll burn. Come to me. Now, this moment, David, please, David, please. Mother. Don't stop, darling. It'll be too late. Don't move, David! Don't move! Mother! Mother! It's too late, David! It's too late! No! Mother! From these ashes, the phoenix is reborn! o'clock tea. Except I see I'm a little bit late. Could I talk to you for a minute? Why is it every time I'm on my way out the front door, somebody wants to talk to me? I know what you're going to say. I don't think you do. And the answer is yes. I am going to meet Buzz. And any other incredulous questions, we'll all get the same answer. Yes, I'm madly in love with him. And yes, of course, I'm going to marry him. Now may I go? Carolyn! Maggie Evans is dead. How did it happen? When Mr. Evans found her, she was alive. But she died in the hospital. When? Last night. Joe just called. Poor Joe. Poor Maggie. Did they know what happened? Apparently not. But I didn't want to ask Joe too many questions. He was pretty shook up, huh? I guess so. But you know Joe. He doesn't always let you know how, how deeply he's feeling. Well, I, I thought you'd probably want to know. Vicky. Mm -hmm. You and Maggie were really good friends, weren't you? Yes. I'm sorry this happened. I really am. Thank you. And I must admit, I don't feel very much like going out. Then don't. I told Buzz I'd meet him. Tell him you've changed your mind. But I haven't. Really? Can't you call it off just for tonight? I don't want to. After all, the wedding's only a few days off. And you've got to hurt your mother as much as possible. What does this have to do with my mother? I'm talking about my wedding, not hers. I don't think it would be fair not to spend some time with my future husband. Oh, come on. You just don't know what love is like, Vicky, that's all. Sorry, Vicky. The last thing we should be doing today is arguing. I wouldn't mind arguing if I thought it was going to do some good. Well, it won't. So let's just skip it. Carolyn, you just don't know what you're doing if you did. But I do. No, you don't. Thanks for giving me the excuse of ignorance, Vicky. But I don't want it. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I'm doing it deliberately. Maybe you do know what you're doing. 
But you don't know what your mother's doing. She's marrying Jason McGuire. And you think that's all there is to it? Isn't it enough? I thought you used to think that... that he had some hold over her. That was before my mother opened the room in the basement. And that's all it took to convince you that... that he wasn't having any hold over her? Vicky, do you know something I should know? Do you? No. No, I don't. I just know that you shouldn't be doing this to your mother. Why? Because it's just possible that Jason is forcing her to marry him after all? Maybe. Well, if that's the case, then I know I'd be doing exactly what I am doing. I don't understand. If my mother hasn't got the courage to stand up to Jason McGuire, if she's giving in to him and forgetting all about my father... Your mother has a lot more courage than you and I could ever hope to have. And as for forgetting about your father... Vicky. I'm sorry. I just don't see how you can stand up for her when we both know what she's doing. I can't help it. Vicky, do you know something? I don't. No. Are you sure? I'm positive. Then don't talk to me about my mother's so-called courage. She's selling out to Jason McGuire. She's selling herself out and she's selling out my father. And if you think I'm a sellout too, let's just say it runs in the family. Well, your mother would be happy to see you. As of course I am. I didn't know there would be anyone outside the family. Mr. Devlin is here because I invited him. He seems to persist in the notion that the wedding will not take place, and I thought this was one way of convincing him. I certainly hope so. Ah, the judge. That means we can start on time. I'm sure you will have other plans later on. Yes, I have plans. Uh, good evening. Well, I see we're almost done. All assembled. Ah, Roger. How are you, Judge? I'm fine, thank you. We haven't seen you at the club lately. And this must be the group. Yes. It's a pleasure, Mr. McGuire. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Devlin, I didn't expect to see you. Oh, I stray from the straight and narrow every once in a while. Uh, yes. Hello, Carolyn. Hello. How pretty you have grown. Thank you. Well, uh... Where is the bride? Where is my dear Elizabeth? She'll be right down. Now, you must be Miss Winters. Yes, how do you do? Fine, thank you. And I must not leave without getting your signature as witness. We want this to be legal, don't we? Yes. Can I offer you a drink, Judge? Oh, thank you. Carol. Well, oh, don't look so surprised, Vicky. You don't think I'd miss my mother's wedding? No, of course not. Vicky, are you sure that uh, Liz doesn't want you to help her with something? She wanted me to tell everyone that she'd be down in a minute. And what a beautiful bride she will be. I remember when she married Paul Stoddard in this very room. People gasped when she came through the door. She was so beautiful. And she still is. Oh, there was a fine crowd here that day. And not a murmur among them as they stood looking toward the door, waiting. Elizabeth. I'm sorry if I've kept you all waiting. Merely for 20 years, my dear, and it was worth every one of them. Don't you think so, Judge? I have fought so for years. Carol. Hello, Mother. 
I'm so glad you could be here. I knew you would be. Rick, I see you decided to come. Yes. We may as well start. Yes, I think we may as well. You'll join me, Elizabeth. Uh, uh, Judge, uh, where do you want us to start? Well, since this is an informal wedding, uh, we will eliminate the preliminaries. If you were two, will stand in front of me. Here. Right. Oh, dear. Can you come stand by me? I'll ask the usual questions and you'll give the usual answers. Then, Jason, you'll slip on the ring and after a few minutes it'll all be over. Ah, no. It'll be the beginning of our happiness. Happiness? Now, if you will just join hands. Do you, Elizabeth Stoddard, take this man? Jason McGuire, to be your lawful husband, to have and to hold from this day forward in sickness and in health until death do you part. Yes. Answer, I do, dear. Answer? Say simply, I do. I... I... Liz? I know. Liz? No, no, I can't. Oh, leave her alone. Wait, Elizabeth. What is it? I killed Paul Stoddard, and that man was my accomplice. 